30 years <coughs> knock me over with a feather because it sure don't seem like it. I mean, as I look out here, I see camera crews and a backstop and, you know, more scenes to do and big dogs and all that sort of thing. Um, I guess I could tell you where the idea came from. Does anybody want to know that? All right. So here's your never give up story of the day. Uh, I did a picture in 1991, I wrote it, and I was directing it, called Radio Flyer, and they, uh, ooh, a fan, uh, and they fired me off that picture, and as I was driving home, up the 405 freeway, anybody who's been in Southern California knows what, what a nightmare that is, uh, after having been fired off my first studio picture as the director, uh, a memory came to me of my brother jumping a fence when we were little kids and lived in uh, Pacoima, California, San Fernando Valley, and he jumped the fence to get a baseball and a dog uh, bit him. And he jumped at the behest of a bunch of bullies that lived at the end of the, the, uh, the block, and they never let us play with them. And since they, in those days, you had a baseball. You didn't have a bucket of baseballs. So they lost one, they told him, go over, they'd never let him play before. He said, oh, yay, he might have been eight years old, and over he went, and he got hurt real bad. I said, well, you know, that's, that's an idea for a movie, but who wants to see a movie about a bunch of bullies? Uh, so by the time I got home, uh, I had turned them in my head into heroes. Uh, I sat down, I gave them all names, and uh, about four weeks later, the script was done. And, uh, yeah, that one wrote itself, literally. And probably we were in Utah not too much after that, maybe like four, five months, something like that. We were here uh, building and, and, and shooting, and we picked Utah because uh, we didn't have the kind of uh, money to buy the resources we needed to make the movie well in L.A., and L.A. is a desert surrounded by purple mountains. Sound familiar? Yeah, and so is the Salt Lake Valley. And uh, as far as I could ever find, it's the only two places on Earth that look like that, so this little piece of paradise became the Sandlot. Um, Thirty years ago, if you had asked me uh, if I'd be back here, 30 years from then, I would have told you you were crazy. Um, not a day goes by that I don't get an email, a text, a Facebook thing, an Insta. Uh, I hear somebody, I was in the airport yesterday, and maybe five or six times I heard you're killing me smalls. Thousands and thousands of people in the Atlanta airport. I was, <laughs> one of the best ones ever was I was in the Denver airport catching a connecting flight in some poor mid-30s dad had about a three and a half year old child uh, with him who was just throwing the biggest fit you ever saw and just as I walk by the guy he stops drops his bags looks at his kid and goes you're killing me smalls and I stop and I stare at this guy and I said dude you're not gonna believe this <laughs> and he looks at me and I told him and he still didn't think it was true and I said uh, Give me your mailing address, and I'll send your, uh, it was his son, your boys some stuff. So I did. And to this day, that kid still has that stuff up in his, his den, on his wall, posters and such. Um, I've heard a lot of people here today tell me how much the movie means to them and has meant to their family over the years. Uh, one lady told me that uh, her family's on the third generation of Sandlot fans. And I can tell you that that is very true. I've been all over this country. I've met hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, I've shaken that many hands and signed that many baseballs and babies. And it just never goes away. It's just as important to the next generation as it once was to the one before. And the thing that I really dig most about that is the enthusiasm with which the current generation passes it on to the next generation, yes. right? It's like, it's like one of those things you get to tell your kid, those important things. You gotta wait till they're 10, 14, yada, yada, yada. Well, this is one of those things.